The rusty, old pickup truck rattled down a dusty country road, each bump and jolt a jarring reminder of its age. At the wheel, Sergeant Major Thomas Anderson, a man whose weathered face and calloused hands told tales of countless battles, hummed a forgotten military march. The sun beat down on the arid landscape, casting long shadows that danced with the rhythm of the truck's sputtering engine. His peaceful solitude was shattered by a news bulletin blaring from the radio, its urgency cutting through the tranquil silence. The announcer's voice, tight with barely suppressed panic, spoke of a hostile alien race known as the Crawl. They had issued an ultimatum to Earth, surrender or face annihilation. Anderson's grip on the steering wheel tightened, his knuckles turning white. A cold fury simmered beneath his calm exterior, a familiar feeling from his days in the trenches. He had thought his fighting days were over, replaced by peaceful fishing trips and quiet evenings on his porch. But duty called once more. The next morning, Anderson stood ramrod straight in his military dress uniform. The medals on his chest, each a symbol of valor and sacrifice, gleamed in the morning light. He ran a hand over the worn fabric, his touch lingering on the faded patches and frayed edges. This uniform, a relic of a bygone era, was more than just clothing. It was a second skin, a testament to his unwavering commitment to his country and fellow soldiers. As the world descended into chaos, Earth's military forces mobilized, their ranks filled with fresh-faced recruits eager to prove their mettle. But their youthful enthusiasm was no match for the Krall's advanced technology and ruthless tactics. The aliens, emboldened by their early victories, pressed their advantage, their relentless assault pushing humanity to the brink of despair. In the face of impending defeat, Earth's leaders turned to a familiar figure, a grizzled veteran whose name had become synonymous with resilience and unwavering resolve. The call came late one night, and the crackling static on the line was a stark reminder of the desperate situation. Anderson, his voice steady and unwavering, accepted without hesitation. He arrived at the military base to a scene of controlled chaos. Young soldiers, their faces etched with fear and uncertainty, watched as he stepped out of his old truck, his duffel bag slung over his shoulder. Their eyes followed him as he made his way through the throng, his every step radiating an aura of quiet confidence. Anderson wasted no time. He gathered the young soldiers, their faces a sea of apprehension, and began to impart his hard-won wisdom. He taught them not to rely solely on superior firepower, but to use their minds as their most potent weapon. He showed them how to read the battlefield, anticipate the enemy's moves, and turn their own weaknesses into strengths. Overconfident in their technological superiority, the Kral underestimated the old soldier and his band of newly trained warriors. They had expected a swift victory, but soon learned that experience and cunning were weapons that never dulled with age. Under Anderson's leadership, the human forces began to turn the tide. They used guerrilla tactics, ambushing crawl patrols, disrupting their supply lines, and sowing discord among their ranks. They transformed the battlefield into a maze of traps and ambushes, turning the crawl's own technology against them. The crawl, accustomed to overwhelming their opponents with brute force, found themselves outmaneuvered and outwitted at every turn. Their initial arrogance gave way to frustration and fear, as they realized they were facing an enemy who refused to be broken. In a desperate attempt to regain the upper hand, the crawl launched a massive offensive, their ships filling the sky, and their ground troops swarming across the ravaged landscape. But Anderson, ever the strategist, had anticipated this move. He had prepared his forces for this final showdown, and they met the crawl's onslaught with unwavering resolve. The battle raged for days, a brutal dance of death and destruction. The crawl, their initial confidence shattered, fought with the desperation of a cornered beast. But the human forces, inspired by Anderson's leadership and fueled by their own courage, refused to yield. They fought with the tenacity of those who knew they were defending their very existence, their every shot, every maneuver, a testament to their unyielding spirit. Anderson, his old bones aching, his lungs burning with each ragged breath, stood at the forefront of the battle. He moved with the grace of a seasoned warrior, his movements honed by decades of combat. His sharp and unwavering eyes scanned the battlefield, taking in every detail, every shift in the tide of battle. Ultimately, it was not superior technology or brute force that won the day. It was the indomitable spirit of humanity, embodied by a grizzled old soldier who refused to surrender. The crawl, their forces decimated, their will to fight broken, retreated in disgrace. Once a symbol of their power, their ships limped away from Earth, 
leaving behind a trail of wreckage and the bitter taste of defeat. In the aftermath of the war, Anderson returned to his quiet life. His name whispered in reverence by the soldiers he had trained. He had become a legend, a symbol of hope in a time of darkness. His story was told and retold, passed down from generation to generation, a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit. Back on his porch, the setting sun casting long shadows across the land, Anderson sat in his rocking chair, a worn fishing rod resting against the wall beside him. A small smile played on his lips as he listened to the chirping of crickets and the gentle rustling of leaves. The quiet solitude was a balm to his weary soul, a stark contrast to the chaos of the battlefield. But even in his peaceful retirement, Anderson's mind remained sharp, his senses attuned to the world around him. He knew that the war had changed him and had left an indelible mark on his soul. But he also knew that he had made a difference and had helped to preserve the freedom and future of his planet. One evening, as he sat watching the sunset, a young boy approached him, his eyes wide with awe and admiration. The boy, trembling with excitement, asked Anderson about his adventures, battles, and triumphs. Anderson, his heart warmed by the boy's innocent curiosity, began to tell his story, his words painting a vivid picture of courage, sacrifice, and the unyielding spirit of humanity. Anderson's voice filled the night as the stars twinkled in the darkening sky. His words carried the weight of history, the echoes of a war that had tested the very limits of human endurance. His story, a testament to the power of the human spirit, would live on long after he was gone, a beacon of hope in a universe filled with uncertainty. As the years passed, Anderson settled back into a semblance of normalcy. But the world around him had irrevocably changed. Humanity had emerged from the crucible of war, stronger and more united than ever before. The crawl invasion had served as a wake-up call, a stark reminder of the fragility of peace and the importance of vigilance. Once a solitary figure, Anderson found himself sought after for his wisdom and experience. Military leaders from across the globe came to him for counsel, eager to learn from the man who had defied the odds and led humanity to victory. He became a mentor to a new generation of soldiers, sharing his knowledge and instilling in them the values of courage, honor, and selfless service. But Anderson's influence extended far beyond the military. He became a symbol of hope and resilience, a reminder that even in the darkest of times, the human spirit could prevail. His story inspired countless individuals to overcome their challenges, face adversity with courage, and never give up on their dreams. One day, as Anderson was fishing on a quiet lake, a young woman approached him. She was a reporter eager to interview the legendary war hero. Anderson, always reluctant to be in the spotlight, hesitated at first. But then he saw the determination in the young woman's eyes, the same determination he had seen in the faces of his soldiers during the war. He agreed to the interview. As they sat by the lake, the sun setting behind them, Anderson recounted his experiences, his voice filled with both pride and sorrow. He spoke of the horrors of war, the loss of life, the sacrifices made by countless individuals. But he also spoke of the camaraderie, the courage, the unwavering belief in a better future. The young woman listened intently, her pen scribbling furiously across her notepad. She was captivated by Anderson's story, his words resonating with a truth and authenticity that transcended the boundaries of time and space. After the interview, as the young woman prepared to leave, she asked Anderson one final question. What would you say to those who doubt the power of the human spirit? who believe that we are doomed to repeat the mistakes of the past. Anderson paused momentarily, his eyes gazing out at the lake's calm waters. Then, with a gentle smile, he replied, I would tell them to look to the past, to the stories of those who have come before us. I would tell them to remember the sacrifices made by our ancestors, the battles fought, the victories won. I would tell them that the human spirit is a force of nature, capable of overcoming any obstacle, to any adversity. And I would tell them that, as long as we have hope and believe in ourselves, we can achieve anything. The young woman, filled with newfound inspiration, thanked Anderson for his time and wisdom. As she walked away, she couldn't help but feel a sense of awe and gratitude. She had just met a living legend, a man whose story would continue to inspire generations to come. Anderson watched as the young woman disappeared into the distance, her figure silhouetted against the vibrant colors of the sunset. He knew that his time on this earth was limited and that the war had taken its toll on his aging body. 
but he also knew that his legacy would live on, his story etched into the annals of human history. He closed his eyes, the gentle breeze caressing his face and nature's sounds filling his ears. He was at peace, knowing that he had lived a life of purpose, a life dedicated to serving his country and his fellow human beings. And as he sat there, under the vast expanse of the night sky, he couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and satisfaction. He had done his duty, made a difference, and left the world a better place than he had found it.